Good evening and welcome to this annual gala for Ford's Theater. On behalf of actors and performers everywhere, thank you for your support in maintaining this national shrine as a working theater. Now, to begin this evening in a wonderful way, you know, when you're introducing someone who was born in Delight, Arkansas, you might be tempted to say, you know, to talk about a delight from Delight. <laughs> so you might be tempted, but I am not. <laughs> I'm going to resist that temptation and say instead that here is a genuine country and pop superstar, Glenn Campbell. <laughs> It's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. That makes me tend to leave my sleeping bag roll up and stash behind your couch. And it's knowing I'm not shackled by forgotten words and bonds and the ink stains that have dried upon some of mine. That keeps you on the back road by the rivers of my memory It keeps you ever gentle along my mind And it's not clinging to the rocks and ivy planted on their columns now that bind me Or something that somebody said because they thought we fit together walking You know what it is It's just knowing that this world will not be cursing or forgiving when I walk along some railroad track and find That you're moving on the back road by the reverse of my memory And for hours you're just in alone my mind okay. He has made a jet plane disappear. He's made the Statue of Liberty disappear. He's escaped from Alcatraz, and he's walked through the Great Wall of China. Tonight, we again get to be amazed by the daring and the unique magic of David Copperfield. Thank you very much. This is our fourth time having the honor to perform before the President, Mrs. Reagan, and all of you at uh, Ford's Theater. Tonight, we prepared something extra special. Because of the precision involved, it took me two years to master what you're about to see. We call it On the Edge.
What is the best schooling for a young musician? Does he just hang out in jazz joints and listen? Or does he go to Northwestern and the University of Iowa and study music theory? But maybe he does both and becomes the uniquely talented composer and instrumentalist, David Sanborn. <laughs> to be in this theater tonight listening to his music sung by the superbly talented Maureen McGovern. Let the drums roll out. Let the trumpets call while the people shout. Strike up the band. Let the cymbals ring.
As I hope most of you know, on television, I live in Miami, and so does our next guest. you think he'd stop by once in a while. You know, it can't be that far out of the way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the exciting star of Miami Vice, Don Johnson. You know, when I was a kid in school, we used to write, recite Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Tonight, I'd like to recite a speech made by another president. It was an important speech for him, albeit a short one, and as it turned out, an important speech for us, too. The speaker was Ronald Reagan, and the speech was simply, I do. Now, whatever an actor's politics, there's always a, there's a pride that all of us feel that an actor has made it to the White House, if for no other reason than it could pave the way for um, another actor. <laughs> we should also take pride in the actress he brought with him. Make no mistake, she's a very special woman, our First Lady. She is ever gracious, representing her husband and her country at important events around the world. She's also a fighter. Taking the battle against drugs from corporate boardrooms to inner city classrooms. Mrs. Reagan, as a fellow American and a contributor and ardent supporter in your fight against drug abuse, having been a victim myself, I just want to say I'm very glad that the president made that short speech 35 years ago. Tonight, the cast of this show decided we'd like to do something special for you. And we wanted it to be the best for the best. We wanted a song that, uh, well, uh, who better to, that would be made just for you. And who better to sing it but Sammy Kahn. <laughs> and to dance with the bell of the ball, who could imagine a better partner than Mikhail Baryshnikov? Pardon him, please, if he feels ill at ease with a real live. 
girl Nancy by name with a first lady's fame and a real live girl Grand ballerinas who dance on their toes He understands as you well might suppose But here tonight he is awed by the sight and the warmth that you feel with a real live girl the Rishnik cub can be shy as a dove with a real live girl he won't amaze with those wild tours you taste with a real live girl Mrs. Reagan is floating on air. He thinks she's ginger and he's Fred Astaire. When there's a theme and the girl is a dream, then the waltz has a peel. According to a recent Gallup poll, the choice of most American men for the woman they would most like to spend an evening with was Mrs. Reagan. And I'd like all you gentlemen to know that having had the privilege of spending an enchanting evening of dining and dancing at the White House, you could not have made a better choice. <laughs> Mrs. Reagan's popularity is especially high right here in this theater. For six years, her commitment and her generosity have helped keep this building not merely a shrine, but also a working theater. Ford's Theater has a special honor they give to those whose contribution has made a lasting impact on the life of this historic but still vital part of our nation's capital. It is called the Lincoln Ford's Theater Medal. Along with the enduring thanks and warmest wishes of everyone connected, with this theater, it is my pleasure to present it to Mrs. Nancy Rangan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I'm very appreciative although I feel a little um, guilty about getting an award for, for being here six times for doing something that I really enjoyed as much as I have. I've loved coming. I've loved seeing the shows. I've loved being a part of, of this theater and helping in any small way to restore this theater. I don't think you can come in here without feeling a certain something. And when you look up there at that box, you have to feel a certain tummy freeze. <laughs> I know I feel it, and I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that every actor who's on the stage feels it, and every, every member of the audience feels it. And I hope you continue to feel it for many, many years to come. And I'm very grateful to you, Sammy, Don, Misha, <laughs> everybody. Thank you so much. You can depend on AT&T Long Distance. The Lincoln Center, the theme was vaudeville. 
Tonight, we're fortunate to have a reprise of that tribute to the legendary Sophie Tucker, performed as it was that night by our own Miss B. Arthur. Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do some very plain speaking to folks who are constantly groaning and shrieking about aches and pains they seem to endure and vague, puzzling ailments their doctors can't cure. They're generally folks married 10 years or more who suffer from ills they never had before. They don't feel just right or sleep as they should. Still, they keep going to doctors who do them no good. They're grouchy and cranky. Their nerves are all jerky. Now look, we're all over 20. So let's talk plain turkey. You've got to be loved to be healthy. That's the easiest way to keep well. You can't get rid of your ills with those powders and pills. You need love and affection for that schoolgirl complexion. Girls, there's nothing like romance and kisses to build you up when you're run down. If you have back aches, side aches, front aches, fevers and chills, you don't need a doctor. No, sir, you need one of those thrills. You've got to be loved to be healthy. And I'm the healthiest gal in town. surgeons, dentists, chiropractors, and masseurs all have their favorite remedies, their theories, and cures. You pay and pay, and every day you keep on getting paler. The truth is you don't need a doctor. You need a sailor! <laughs> they say get out of doors. You must have sunshine, they'll warn you. Why, the moon has done more for me than all the sun in California. <laughs> they tell you to get out and exercise on a tennis court. I say do your exercising in that well-known indoor sport. <laughs> You've got to be loved to be healthy. It's the easiest way to keep well. If you can't sleep at night and your stomach's not right, you'll soon be hale and hearty if you eat the right party. A good man's kiss is worth 20 doctors or specialists of great renown. For years, a doctor tried to cure a sick friend of mine. One day, the doc was out, the nurse was in, now my friend is fine. You've got to be loved to be healthy. Tonight, as a special service to those of you who will be out on the campaign trail this fall, we bring you an expert on domestic affairs and a man known far and wide as both a silver-tongued orator and master speechwriter. Here is Norm Crosby. Thank you. Isn't that nice? I cannot tell you what a joy it is to, to walk on a stage in a magnificent circumvented auditorium and see people, God bless you, squished into this room. I really mean that. <laughs> and, and to come out here after all this excitement and splendor and magnificence and music and, and dancing and, and, and thrill, and, and you, you can still come up with that kind of an ovulation. God bless you. I mean it. I mean it. I have an Italian friend, he married an Irish girl, tip this for real, and their son had a terrible urge to commit a crime, but thank God he couldn't do it. He, he was too drunk. <laughs> it makes you proud. Think about these things. I am partial to Italians, you know that. 
I really am. I am partial to Italian people. I don't know if you know this about my background, but during the war, an Italian family hid me in their cellar for 14 months. That's the truth. An Italian family. Of course, this was in South Philadelphia, but I appreciated it. <laughs> my God, we need culture. We need culture. Look what's going on in our world. Do you realize what's happening today, how important it is that we come here on nights like this and, and cleanse ourselves of our impunities? <laughs> Read the paper, I mean it. It scared Gary Hart, a young pol political aspirant with good future, to get wiped right out of the picture just because a, a girl came to visit him and decided to, to go home through the window. So what? <laughs> Are you following the evangelists? Have you been reading about that? You know what's going on with it? Jim and, and, and Tammy Faye with the eyelashes? I can't believe that. Anybody see uh, Nightline when Ted Capel interviewed? Did you watch that? He said, I love to go shopping. <laughs> Jim, did you take any money that belonged to your ministry? Wrap yourself in this beer will cover your shield. He said, Jim, I'm asking, did you take any money that belonged to your ministry? If those who hear would seek and find and know that... What kind of answers is that? Say yes or no? <laughs> like that. And, and she said, my husband is not a wife swapper. That I believe. That I believe. I mean, you've got to have something to swap. <laughs> oh, I mean... I mean it. You have to know what's going on. Who should know better than you people? This is where you live. The Supreme Court, two days ago, was in the paper, reversed an incision of a minor court. Did you read about that? <laughs> if a person of a surrogated sect now wishes to go to an accredited university that has a bilateral quotient, unless his own seduction is into the fifth discipline of his digits, that they won't, won't give him a locker. <laughs> Do you believe that? <laughs> and crime is rampant, I'm sorry. And we try, and we, and the police, I have to say this, they catch the crooks. The judges let them go free because they haven't got circumcising evidence. Isn't that stupid? <laughs> they just caught a pickpocket in Los Angeles airport. I'm sure you didn't even hear about it yet. Uh, one Finger Louie, a famous pickpocket. <laughs> one Finger Louie, that's his name. He only has one finger on his right hand. He only steals bagels and donuts. That's all he steals. <laughs> but they caught him red-handed. Just a minute. <laughs> and they had to let him go because they couldn't put the finger on him. That's the truth. <laughs> Think about it. Do you realize, friends, when you go to court in front of a jury that you are putting your fate in the hands of 12 people who weren't smart enough to get out of jury duty? <laughs> You have to care. You have to care about these things. God bless you. You care or you wouldn't be here tonight. Nancy cares. She has done such wonderful things and she's involved with so many things. I happen to know that Nancy is involved with the House Hearing Institute in Los Angeles because I am a spokesman for the House Institute. And what she does is travel around the country and teach people that when you commune with other people, when you speak, you have to say words to them, otherwise they wouldn't know what you're saying to them, or they, they couldn't hear it unless you said something. Is that how it is? No, <laughs> so it's something like that. But it's important when you speak that you say, that you talk. You have to say things. What would you say, for example, to a one-legged hitchhiker? Hop in. <laughs> and if you call a girl a good egg, does not mean that she goes over easy. That's not what it means. <laughs> what would you say to somebody that was going to the electric chair? More power to you? You don't say that. It's important that you listen. I, I, I have neighbors. I have some neighbors in Los Angeles, sweet, wonderful people, older couple, and, and the husband called his wife into the room one day. He said, Mary, he said, you know what's the matter with you? You don't listen to me. You can't hear me when I talk to you. He said, I want to make a test. I want you to go way in the back of the room and just stand there. And she went to the back of the room and she stood there and he said, Mary, can you hear me? Nothing. He said, move up a little. Up, right about there, stop there. Mary, can you hear me? Nothing. He said, come up close, stay right about there. He said, Mary, can you hear me? Nothing. He said, come over here. 
said, I'm a businessman, I'm not a doctor, but I know what I'm talking about. Three times I said to you, Mary, can you hear me? And she said, that's right. And three times I answered yes. <laughs> tell you something ladies and gentlemen you have been a joyous audience you really have you have you have more than made up in density what you lacked in equation I really mean that and I can't thank you enough I'm grateful to all of you for letting me be a, a small part of this evening good night and thank you very much You can see the dream of success in the eyes of, of American audiences for over half a century can only describe one artist, the great Cab Calloway. a young man courting the girls I played a waiting game if a maid passed by with tossing curls I'd give this old earth a couple of words as I plied her with tears in lieu of pearls as time came along she came my way as time came along she came oh it's a long long time from may to december and the days grow short when you reach november the autumn weather a change of leaves to play. A one hasn't got time for the waiting game. The days dwindle down to an endless view. September to November. And these two precious days I'll spend with you. These precious days I'll spend with you. Thank you very much. Now, folks, will everybody join in and sing the hidey highs and the hoody hoes to good old Minnie the Butcher.
king of Sweden. He gave her things that she he was needing. Gave her a home built of gold and steel. A diamond car with the platinum wheel. Each means he ate worlds a dozen carcasses. Million dollars worth of nickels and dimes. Sat around and counted them all a million times. I was going to be called upon, so I prepared. <laughs> it is a pleasure for me to be here tonight, especially now that everybody knows I'm with the hottest date around. <laughs> but entertainment covers a broad range of artistic endeavors, big and small. Let it never be overlooked that our freedom also manifests itself in the off-Broadway productions, the community theaters, church plays and choirs, the street entertainers, the circuses, and all those comedy acts and musical groups that can be found in towns and hamlets all across America. In many countries, entertainers are not so free. They often must have their performances approved by government officials. Well, in our country, people are free to speak and free to tell a joke, even if it tweaks the nose of a government official. And you thought that scar on my nose was from too much sun. <laughs> our good humor is one of our greatest national assets, and entertainment has been a lively part of the American scene from our earliest days. And for all those American entertainers of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, Ford's Theater represents their important contribution to our way of life. This theater continues a great American tradition and broadens appreciation for the theater arts. So Nancy and I extend to you our deepest appreciation for your help in maintaining this historic site. Thanks to all those who performed for us tonight. When I saw David Copperfield hanging there in midair over that sword, I know that he now understands what it feels like to be a candidate for public office. <laughs> Seriously, though, this has been a wonderful evening for a worthy cause. A special word of appreciation to Joy Baker, Betty Wright, Millie O'Neill, Carol Laxalt for their commitment to Ford's Theater, and also to Mary Jane Wick and Frankie Hewitt for all the hard work they put into making this the memorable show that it has been. So a thank you to all of you. God bless you all. This is Connie Selk inviting you to stay tuned for Hotel next. Tuesday, Tony decides the new boy in town should be the new boy in Sam's life, even if she doesn't want him on Who's the Boss? This is Jason Seaver, psychiatrist and father. Do your kids drive you crazy sometimes? Well, you're not alone. Growing Pains, Tuesdays.